say keep your fingers crossed. <laughs> we'll find out. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good, morning. <coughs> Good crowd. In spite of the fact that you found out I was going to teach, you showed up anyway. Uh, I love, we're in the book of John, the gospel of John, I should say. And uh, we, as we, as Nancy has mentioned and Bill has mentioned, we are in the gospel of John for this entire month and into the next month. And I'm glad. It's a great, great gospel. It's, if you can't hang on to John, you just, you just can't hang on to anything. And today we're going to be in the ninth chapter of John. And it, the title is The Man Born Blind. The Man Born Blind. We're going to be in chapter 9, 1 through 7, jumping over to 15 through 16, and then on into 38. So we've got quite a bit here. <clears throat> you know, where, where are we now? Where are we now in Israel? Jesus has quite a job educating his disciples and followers especially when it came to theories they had about many things, incorrect theories. Today we're going to see how Jesus went about teaching his disciples about misconceptions they had about bad things happening to people. Dr. Ed, I'm so glad you're here today because there's a lot of medical in here. And if I need help, I'll get with you. Uh, was it bad things happening to bad people? Let's see from our lesson today, starting in chapter 9, 1 through 5. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. <clears throat> we must work the works of him, God, who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Now let's stop right there. Here we are in the year of 2022. It sounds, I'll be honest, it sounds ridiculous of us to wonder how anyone could be so stupid as to think a person could sin even from birth. Jesus is getting ready to perform a miracle. And Barclay tells us that it is the only miracle recorded in the four Gospels in which the sufferer is said to have been afflicted from his birth. The disciples of Jesus used this opportunity to put to Jesus a problem which Jews thought had always been a deep concern. Folks, the Jews connected suffering with sin. If you suffered, you sinned. If someone's suffering, that person has sinned. Jesus tells his followers that he is the light of the world and that now, at this very time, he is going to prove it to him, to them. Now let's proceed with the scripture we have for today. Verse 6. When Jesus has said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go and wash in the pool of Siloam. There, uh, then the man went and washed and came back able to see. Then the Pharisees also began to ask the man how he had received his sight. He said to them, This man put mud on my eyes. Then I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. Aha! Here's where the problem they've got. We've got the Pharisees, the legalists that they are. They now see Jesus also as a sinner. Why? Working on the Sabbath. He's working on the Sabbath. Exactly. Oh, working on the Sabbath. And he sees this uh, Jesus as a sinner 
because he has performed this on the Sabbath. When I wrote this, <clears throat> I thought of another incident when Jesus said, the Sabbath is made for man and not man for the Sabbath. Some of the Pharisees disagreed with their brother Pharisees. They began to question themselves. Quote, if he is a sinner, how can he perform such signs? They were divided. The Pharisees were divided many times. Remember one of the lessons I taught before with Nicodemus? He was a Pharisee. He was a member of the Sanhedrin. And yet he came to Jesus and he became a disciple of Jesus. He was a Pharisee. He was a, a, a member of the Sanhedrin. He was a direct descendant of Abraham. He had all of the wonderful credentials. He walked away from that because he, he, he not only did he walk away from it, but when Jesus died, if you remember, uh, he bought the incense and the ointments and all for Jesus' anointing. So we're going to pick up on verse 24. So for the second time, the Pharisees called the man who had been blind, and they said to him, Give glory to God. We know this man, Jesus, this man, Jesus, is a sinner. The man answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I can see. Here is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from. And yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. The Pharisees answered him, you were born entirely in sins, <clears throat> And you are trying to teach us? And they drove him out. <clears throat> Jesus heard that they had driven him out. And when Jesus found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir? Tell me, so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. The man said, Lord, I believe, and he worshiped him. In class, this, this man had a light bulb moment. Have you ever had a time when you could just could not figure something out, and then suddenly, like a light bulb, the light bulb in your mind lit up, and boom, you got your answer. You and I have had a hard time understanding how ignorant people of that day had concerning somebody's affliction. I, I just, I cannot, and having been in pharmaceuticals and, and talking to doctors all the time and, and, and giving them samples of our drugs and so forth, and knowing the wonderful thing that they do and, and the drugs that we have that make us do better, I just cannot imagine people thinking that a person had an affliction and that was because they were sinners. Uh, can you imagine how horrible it was for parents to be accused by their neighbors of sin, showing up because of their sins? We can see that attitude showing up in several places in the Old Testament. A lot of this is misconceptions from people from the Old Testament. In Exodus and also in Numbers, we have such passages as this one. I am the Lord your God. I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations. One of the keynotes of the Old Testament was that the sins of the fathers was always visited upon the children. This was the common attitude towards suffering in the ancient world. If someone was poor, disabled, or sick, it was in their mind that they had offended God. When I was in college, I had a Christianity professor, and I remember it from the day he said it, and he said that Jesus came to earth to clean up 
mankind's attitude. I love that. I, that college professor said it, and, and he said Jesus came to earth to clean up mankind's attitude. Jesus sees this situation differently. He sees a blind man as a child of God, limited by physical darkness, as a wonderful opportunity to restore the blind man's sight. It was a wonderful opportunity and a wonderful witness as to what Jesus can do. Uh, I want to tell you, when my family moved from Columbus to Macon, uh, I was around 13, and we got very, uh, my dad and my sister and I, we all got, we got very active in the church at Tattnall Square Baptist in Macon. Uh, and we had an organist there. When, I, when we joined the church, they had an organist. The organist was blind. The organist was blind. And, and I would go in and I'd, I'd come in and say, I can't even remember his name now. I'd say, oh, hey, how are you? And he'd say, hey, Wallace, how are you? And my dad would come in and he'd say, hey, Mr. Faulkner, how are you? It was, this man was incredible. And he played the organ. Gee, I should tell Jane Martin about that. Jane Martin is not blind. Believe me. Ooh, she's great. <clears throat> so he was born blind and played that organ for quite a while. Uh, he, so blind people can do things. Without saying a word, Jesus spits on the ground, creates mud, and spreads it on the man's eyes. Then he tells him to go and wash in the pool of Siloam. He does that, and his vision is restored. Are there Pharisees in the world today? Well, I'm going to tell you something. This is a little personal, but it'll give you a good idea. Uh, when I taught full-time in here, uh, I came in one time and I taught. Uh, Nancy, you can relate to this a lot when you sing in the choir and you have to run back and forth. And I was singing in the choir at that time. So I, I taught full time and I taught the lesson. And then I went up, ran up to the choir loft to get the robe on and everything. We sang our lungs, sung our lungs out, which was wonderful. And then when it was over, uh, I went, and Mary Lou and I went, and we had lunch with friends. And I came home. It was a beautiful, beautiful Sunday afternoon, and I was going to have come back for deacon's meeting, and that was going to happen around from 8 to 10. So I decided, hey, I'll just, it's a beautiful day, I'll go cut the grass. So I cut the grass. I did about half a lawn, and it took about 20 minutes. And I came in and got dressed again. Around 8 o'clock, uh, I got, left the house around 7 to get here by 8 and so forth. And got here, and I'm walking up get, to get on the elevator, and one of the deacons saw me, and we got to talking. Not in our class. He was not in our class. And I, he said, how are you doing? And I told him what I was doing. He said, you went and cut the grass? <laughs> I said, yeah. He said, you cut the... This is Sunday, a day of rest. A day of rest, man, I, had, I was worn out. I, I had probably lost 15 pounds that day from what, and, and he, he cleaned my plow. And I didn't say, it, he's still in the church, and I love him, we're fine, we're fine. He said, you ought to be ashamed. You have set a terrible example and I felt like I weighed down. I was, and I thought, why am I apologizing to him? I've been here from sun up to sundown. I won't get home till 1030. But was he a Pharisee? Yes. Are there Pharisees in the world today? Uh, today? Yeah. Uh, sometimes I might act like one. But when Jesus found out that the Pharisees had driven this man out of their presence, he searched for him to give him comfort and also to reveal to him who he, Jesus, was the Son of Man. The Jews had cast the man out of the temple, folks, but the Lord of the temple, Jesus, found him and comforted him. Class, 
if we witness to someone, it will also bring us ever nearer to Jesus Christ. Can we witness good? Can we witness bad? Yeah, I've done, I have witnessed bad sometimes, I'm sure. And you know, we all have. But Jesus is always true to the person who is always true to him. And that's a lesson. Any, any comments about anything? Yeah, Nancy. Well, you know, I understand everything you're saying, and I, I, I do believe you, but you know, at the same time, there were doctors back then. Luke was a doctor, and they did what they could. on people as best they could with whatever was at hand. So it sets up a little bit of a dichotomy, doesn't it? I mean. Yeah, they did. Uh, they did have doctors because we, we know that Luke was a doctor. And um, just well, I doubt, doubt he was doing eye surgery. But no. <laughs> no, no. They, uh, what would you think about that, Doctor? Doctor Ed? Well, you know, uh, I don't have anything profound, but like you said, they didn't do much with the eyes. And no. Of all the things that in medicine that fascinates me most is the eye. It, hmm. it really, you know. When I fell a couple of years ago and all kind of stuff and ended up at the North Fulton and your son treated me quite well I must say uh, he did say this though uh, Ed he said uh, you know I've been seeing you in, in sanctuary a lot through the years and you know you, you fell and we x-rayed your head and we, <laughs> we, in fact we x-rayed it three times and just as I always suspected we found nothing up there. <laughs> But he, I got some great treatment. He saw Faulkner up on that thing, and he came running, and bless his heart, he sure did. But anything else? Yes, and I found it interesting. Maybe I hadn't picked up on this before. But Jesus said to the blind man, after he put the mud on his eyes, go wash in the pool of Siloam. The man still couldn't see. But then he went to wash, and when he came back, he was able to see. So Jesus sent a blind man. He had to have faith that it was going to work to do what Jesus did. Yeah. He may have had faith in some of his neighbors or friends that would take him to Siloam. And, uh, but that, that's very interesting, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, Ed? I thought, you know, when you say this, I just thought you would bring up the, the song or sing it. You know, it just goes through. Once I was blind, but now I can see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. One of my favorite. Yeah, yeah. Did well, somebody? To what Ann said, this guy may not have totally believed, but you know how people today, everything they see on TV that tells them they're going to get cured, they buy that stuff. They, oh gosh, they yeah. go to extreme lengths. You know, yeah. so thinking, well, you know, maybe it'll work. Do you all think there are still people in the world that if they see you out cutting the grass on Sunday, you are probably, you know, going to hell? Not me. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think so. Yeah, right. Well, I want to feel good if I ever cut the grass on Sunday. I, I will, I will uh, disguise myself. My father always said the ox may be in the ditch. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. That's right. right. Uh, anything else? We're, you know, we're witnessing every day, everywhere oh. we go. <laughs> when you get up in the morning, Sunday morning, you get dressed and you pull out of your driveway, go to church, your neighbors see you. We have said that. And yeah. In most cases, they know where you're going, you know? Yeah. And then you talk to them. You know, during the days and right. about where you've been and what you're doing. So you're witnessing everywhere you go. A absolutely. And this fellow we were talking about a while ago, George Pridmore, mm -hmm. witnessed by giving Bible <coughs> away. In fact, Bill told me this morning he gave Bill Rowan a Bible. Yeah, I, I was you know? impressed to hear that. I did not yeah. know he did that. I don't know how many he gave away, Gee. but you know, his funeral, yeah. they were talking about him giving away Bibles. Well, you, you know, uh, yeah, my, I work for Cecil Day, uh, Vice President of Franchising, and Cecil Day uh, had a Bible in every room of the Days Inns and the hotels and the motels. And he said, 
uh, we, he, first time he said, please steal this Bible and take it home with you. <laughs> and we talked to Cecil and we said, that's wonderful to do it, but why don't you just say, please take yeah. the Bible. Don't say steal it. <laughs> so he did change it. But uh, we gave so many Bibles away and everybody uh, that wanted one, certainly, and they were, they were nice Bibles. And a lot of hotels are removing them. Yeah. Yes. Um, well, that's we the age that. we're in now. You we can't. Uh, and there's a group of people that are putting stickers on those Bibles. Oh, you heard about no. that? No. 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 Yeah. I think, so. I think this could be hazardous to your oh. health. Oh. 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 Yeah. Yeah. And that's the culture we're living in. Yeah, it is. Yeah. That is so. Cancel culture. Mercy. And, and the uh, religious programs on television usually have a disclaimer. Yeah, yeah. We noticed that. Uh, you hear Dr. Jeremiah, there'll be a disclaimer. And uh, I think another thing that got me, Ronald Reagan's son, Ron Reagan. Mm -hmm. Oh, I he, see him. Oh, did you see that? I see him. He, he does an ad. He, he is saying, Ron Reagan is saying, you know, I'm an atheist, and if I burn in hell, so be it. And you come on and be an atheist with us. Oh, and that's Ronald goodness. Reagan and Nancy Reagan's oh, son. Oh, what a shame. Anyway, I... I let me close and we'll get through. Uh, dear Lord, help us not to have attitudes such as the Pharisees had. Help us to remember your words to us that we are not to judge others in such a way that it will be judged by you, dear Father. Make us aware of these around us who have health problems and financial problems. We are to go out of this room and witness. Help us to do it in a way that is helpful in every way. For we ask all of this in your wonderful and precious name. Amen.